Hello and welcome back to another Python for GCSE Computer Science. This time we're going to look at Flappy Birds and I've tried to create a 1980s retro version of it. Okay, so how it works. Before we begin, a little disclaimer, it doesn't quite look like this. Okay, your version might, but my version is a very, very basic version. But it's addictive, and I'll show you that in a moment. So I've got a step-by-step -step tutorial on creating a simple side-scrolling Flappy Bird game using Python's Turtle and Random Libraries. Okay, first of all, the screen is going to be set up with a bird, a player, and pipes, the obstacles. Okay, so we've got the bird and we've got the pipes. Play controls is so simply going to be a space bar control. We press a space bar, depending on how fast we press it, is how, how fast the bird flaps and, and goes through the pipes. Obstacles are obviously the pipes, and we've got pipes with spaces in them. Okay, the bird must avoid hitting the pipes. If it gets through a gap, or you will score three points. If the bird hits the ground again, the score will be reset. Okay, here is my version of Flappy Birds. Please don't be expecting mega graphics like you'd find on a PlayStation. Um, it's nice and simple. We're using import turtles, so we're just using simple shapes, some, some squares. So um, we're going to be using around about, yeah, 117 lines of code, including comments and spaces. Okay, so it's nice and simple. Got some coordinates going on here. Uh, we've got a scoring system. Yeah, we've got some defining the pipes, defining the movement of the birds, creating the pipes, the bird itself, setting up the screen, and using the space bar to control the bird in flight. So I'll run this, you have a little look and see what you think. Okay, so I'll run the module. So I'm pressing the space bar to try and get through the gaps. Okay. The gaps get narrower, so if we don't make it through, then it resets and goes back to zero. Okay, we've got a tight gap here. Let's see if I can... No. Okay, so as you can see there, we've gone back to zero. Okay, and it carries on. It's quite addictive. We're just pressing the space bar. Ah, okay. So there we go. And then if it crashes to the bottom, again, it resets back to zero. Let's go back to the presentation and have a little look at how we build this. Okay, so job number one... We're going to import the libraries we need. As I said before, we need import turtle and import random. And then we're going to set up this little blue screen here. Okay, how we're going to do that, I've just used um, I've just used WN, basically representing window. WN equals turtle.screen. Okay, WN title is going to be Flappy Birds, you can see here. Um, WN background color is going to be sky blue. And it's going to be... 800 by 600 and I'm going, to, I'm going to stop the screen from refreshing so it will be a continuous play and I'm going to use tracer to stop the screen refreshing so there will be a continuous play. The next step we've got to build the bird. Okay the bird is just going to be a yellow square. A simpler version of this. Again we're going to draw this using turtle so it's bird shape, bird color. We're going to draw that to 0 0.00 but then we're going to lift the pen up and go to minus 200 and that's where the bird's going to start. Okay, we've got our gravity, which you can have a little play with these figures at the, um, and see what happens. Um, the x-coordinates, the y-coordinates, and then we're going to define flap as bird.dy equals 8. Okay, keyboard listening, obviously we've got to bind this together, so we're going to listen. The window is going to listen for an on-key press, um, and this is going to link through to this flap. Yeah, so flap is going to run or bird.dy is going to be played when we press the space bar. Okay, so when the space bar is pressed, the bird's uh, vertical velocity is set to a positive value, making it rise temporarily before gravity pulls it back down. Create the pipes. We're going to create an empty list, first of all, and where the pipes are going to be basically stored. We're going to create the pipes that the bird has to navigate through. This code initializes a list, as you can see here, to hold the pipes, defines a function, yeah, to create a pair of pipes, top and bottom, the top pipes here and the bottom pipes here, and creates an initial set of pipes at the start of the game. Each pipe is a turtle object that is positioned and styled to look like a pipe. Basically it's green, okay, it's a rectangle. The pipes are added to the list for easy management and movement during the game. And I've created a little frame range, okay, to create a pipe here. Move the pipes and the bird. Okay, we've got two functions here, define move pipes and define move bird. So, the move pipes function handles moving the pipes leftwards across the screen and resetting their position when they move off the screen. Okay, the move bird function applies gravity, 
the airbird's gravity to the bird's vertical velocity and updates its position accordingly. Okay, together these functions create the continuous movement of pipes and the bird, forming the core gameplay mechanics. Okay, step five, keeping score. Obviously we've got to keep score, so we're going to use um, turtle.turtle, basically right, and the pen color is going to be black, yeah, and we're going to use courier 24 point to align the text at the top. Then we've got to define a function, yeah, the update score function increments the score and updates the display. The score starts at zero and is incremented each time update score is called. Okay, clearing the previous score and writing the new score in its place. These provide a way to track and display the player's progress in the game. Okay, there's no high score setting or anything like that. It's just a simple we add to the score every time we go th between two of the pipes. Okay, the main game loop, while true, we, the window obviously gets updated and we're going to call the move bird function and the move pipes function and we're going to check for collisions with the ground using this thing here. If the bird reaches minus 290, then we know it's hit the ground. Okay, and the bird dyna and the bird dy is reset to zero. Yep, yeah. and for the pipes, obviously we're going to check if there's any collision with the pipes and we're going to break. And again, the bird dot dy is set to zero and the bird goes back to minus 200, zero. Okay, and finally, let's put it all together, we've got three lines of code. Okay, the final code snippet checks if the bird has just passed a pipe comparing the, bird, the, the pipe's x-coordinate and the bird's x-coordinate minus three units. If the condition is met, it calls the update score function to increment the score and update the player. The logic ensures that the score is updated each time the bird successfully navigates past a pipe, rewarding the player for progressing through the game. Okay, update score. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the screens and we can pause the video and, and whatever you need to do. This, the first 32 lines of code, Again, the spaces and comments in there. I've tried to make it a little bit clearer. I have done another version of this, which I'm going to load onto buymeacoffee.com, and then you can download the code and you can download sort of a, a fuller presentation with every little bit of code explained in great detail. Okay, so setting up the screen, setting up the bird, setting up the flapping of the bird, binding the keys so it's using the space bar. Um, as we said before, an empty list to store the pipes. Okay. Um, creating the pipes, the top pipe and the bottom pipe, using a range for the initial pipes, uh, defining the movement of the pipes, uh, defining the movement of the bird, defining the score, basically writing the score onto the screen, okay, and defining the, how the score works, the main game loop, okay, how it's going to play out, and then finally, oh, we've got it, sorry, I would say then finally, but no, we've got them there, those last three lines, those last three lines of code, okay to update the score once a bird passes through the two pipes. And that's it. Okay, so best of luck with that. Let me know if you run into any, any problems. I can send you the code if you need it. I can't, I can't copy it in, but I can send you a tiny L um, with the code on if you need it. Or as I say, I'll be putting it on along with a, a much more detailed presentation in Buy Me A Coffee. Okay, but that's it. So thank you, good luck, and bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.